Hey everybody, my name is Rochelle Melander and I'm an artist with Arts at Large and we are going to write noisy poetry today. So I want to start by looking at our bags and seeing what you have and so you can kind of pull it out and get a sense of what you'll need. Um, there's a great poster in there so that we won't be using but it's great to have. Um, you have a list of noisy words so keep this handy, that's really important, we'll all be using that. And then you just have some plain scratch paper, which is great. We'll be using that. Then you have fancier paper, and you can tell it's fancier because it's heavy. Um, so you're going to save that for the very end because that's when we get to do our fancy writing and some of our coloring. You probably also have a sheet that has some noisy animals and trucks on it. So there's a truck, a bear, a dinosaur, and then a bunch of bees and stuff. Um, and then you have some really exciting um, things. You have markers, a pencil sharpener, two very sharp pencils, uh, eraser, and a Sharpie marker. So um, what I want you to do is just put everything back in the bag for a little bit um, until it's time to get to work. And I, oh, you know what I want you to keep out? I want you to keep out your pencil and one piece of the scratch paper. So the scratch paper is the kind of flimsy paper like this. So you're going to keep that out with your pencil so that you can write down words. So what we're going to do, well first let me show you what we're making. <laughs> we're making kind of um, some short noisy poetry called haiku. This is a poem by Richard Wright. Richard Wright was a famous African-American poet and I'm going to read you uh, some of his poems in just a minute. But this is one, sleepy bumblebees buzzing about blossoms in the setting sun. So you can see how we kind of made the words big and I took the pictures that we have in your handout and colored them and put it on there. Um, so here's another poem. <coughs> this is an old haiku poem. Um, old pond, frog leaping, splash. So that's what you're going to make at the end, but we have a little bit of a process to go through. So before we make anything, what I want to do is read you a few books. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is read you a couple of poems um, from the book Rumpus of Rhymes by Bobby Katz, illustrated by Susan Estelle Quas. Um, and I think it's really great just to listen to what other people do with noisy words. Um, so what I want you to do as I'm reading these poems is write down any noisy words <coughs> that you really like. So if you hear a noisy word that sounds, oh, that's juicy or exciting, write it down on your flimsy sheet of paper and you can maybe use it. Um, so this is a poem called The Street Where No One Sleeps. Lucia's forced to wear ear stoppers due to double parking coppers. When grumpy drivers cannot pass, they lean upon their horns, alas, toot, 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 and beep, 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 guarantee that no one sleeps. And the next one is called Thunder. So if you've been around and seen a thunderstorm lately, that's what it looks like. Maybe, I don't know, there's a couple people here in the clouds. Thunder, hear him tumble, grumble, rumble, bash, crash, blunder, old grouch, thunder. Always in a mood to fight, morning, afternoon, or night. Lightning quickly answers back with a zigzag, flashing, crack. So do you hear those nice, noisy words and how they make the poem uh, really come alive? You really get a sense of what the thunder sounds like. Um, I'm going to read one more. This is called School Bus Rap. You probably haven't been on a school bus for a long time. You might not be on a school bus for a little time, but it's kind of fun to listen to it. Um, and you, you can kind of imagine these, these, saw, these words with a truck, um, a garbage truck, some other kind of big um, bus. School bus rap. I'm a bin, bin, bin. I'm a bee, bee, bee. I'm a bus, a school bus. Muff, muff, chuff. My motor's rough. My hard seats squeak. My gears say eek. Rain or snow, I go, go, go. I don't fuss. I'm a bus. Instead of saying, slow down, please, a strong foot gives my brakes a squeeze. I wheeze and wheeze and wheeze and wheeze. 
I cannot forget I'm not a jet. I'm a bus. Shuff, a school bus. Hey there, you kid. Toot, toot, toot. Take a seat. You're on my route. I'm a bus. Shuff, I'm a bus. Shuff, a school bus. So you hear all those great words like beep and muff and chuff and eek and wheeze and toot. Those are all the kinds of words that you're going to use when you write your poem. So I want to read you just a few more poems. And these are shorter ones. Um, this is from a book called Seeing Into Tomorrow. And the poems are by Richard Wright. And the illustration is by Nina Cruz. And let's see if we can find a picture. So this is Richard Wright. Richard Wright um, was an African-American novelist and author. And towards the end of his life, he moved to France um, with his family. And there he wrote 4,000 haiku poems. Now, a haiku poem is just a short little poem, like the ones I read to you a little bit earlier um, and the ones that you're going to create. But this will give you an idea of what we're looking for when we come to writing our poems. Just enough of snow for a boy's finger to write his name on the porch. As my delegate, my shadow imitates me for the first day of spring. In this dirt road, winding through windy trees, I must travel. Now let's see, oh, here we go. So insistently, a crow caws in the spring field that I want to look. Now that doesn't have um, a noisy word, you know, kind of like the crow's not saying caw, but he used the word caw, and that gives us a little sense of what a crow might say. So that's really fun. Um, and let me look around here. Let's see if we can find our B because I think that's my favorite one of all of them. Here's, an, here's a nice one. As day tumbles down, the setting sun's signature is written in red. So we don't have a lot of noisiness, but we've got this word tumbled, which sounds like something you could do. So those are some examples. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to take out your paper and your pencil. I'm actually going to use um, my Sharpie or my, my black marker because that's going to help you see it. Um, if I were to use a pencil, you couldn't see my words. Um, so go ahead and get your pencil out and get your, your um, maybe a picture. And what we're going to do is we're going to practice making uh, making. Um, some noisy words and figure out how we're going to do it. Um, so I drew a little picture here of a truck um, and I'm not like a super amazing drawer so you could also take your picture of a truck if you feel uncomfortable with your drawing. Um, and then I just started thinking about well what does um, a truck do? Um, and you can do this by making a list or you can do this by making a mind map. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to make a list for the truck. And then when we start thinking about how it sounds, um, we're going to make a mind map. And then we can look at both processes. So what does a truck do? So I think it drives, right? Someone drives it. It moves. It stops. It goes. Um, sometimes it loads and unloads things, or people load and unload things from the truck. Um, let's see. I'm always thinking about what a truck sounds like, so I want to start that list too, because I feel like if you're working on one thing, you maybe want to work on both of them. So usually with a mind map, I put something like noise, so I'm going to put truck noise in the middle. And then I'm going to think about, well, what are the sounds it makes when it drives? What are the sounds it makes when it stops? What are the sounds it makes maybe when it backs up? And then we'll just put another thing here because, you know, we might have other ideas. And I'm actually going to pull out a different color because sometimes um, it can help us to think of things if we're using a different color and really see what we're working with. Um, and I like the color purple, so I'm going to use that. 
So get out your list of, of noisy words and think about like what are some of the words that a truck makes when it drives or backs up or stops. I always think, you know, when trucks back up, they often have that beep, beep, beep sound. So we can write beep, beep, beep. Um, when a truck stops, um, sometimes it makes that like gr like kind of grinding sound. So you could put grind, but it could also be like a eek. Um, let's see. And sometimes if you're stuck, it's great to just read down the list. So let's look at the list. Ah, choo, trucks, no, don't think so. That's me when I sneeze. Ahem, arg, bam. Oh my goodness. So one thing we didn't put is what a truck does when it crashes, which crash is a great word just in and of itself. So we might put bam, um, bonk, bong, squish, um, boom, oh, which makes me think of another thing. When it drives, it probably says zoom. Um, thunk could be a crash. It could also be something that it says when it stops. Because have you ever been driving and you stop your car suddenly and whatever was in your trunk that bumps up against something and you hear thunk? Um, it could be more of a like a, a breaking sound. So like you could just write the word break, um, shatter. So when a truck drives, oh, broom, <laughs> zoom, um, let's see. Oh, and you know what? Sometimes when a truck drives, people say, wahoo. And then we also have to think about some of the other noises. I don't know if you've ever been around a truck that says beep or honk. Um, maybe when it crashes, it says wham. Um, I'm trying to think of that squeaky brake noise. Squeak, squeal. That's a good one. So see what you have is you have a bunch of noises like this. And then you can start shaping it into a haiku poem. And so haiku poems um, are interesting because they're very, very short. Um, they're not long. Like a long poem, you have lots and lots of words. But a haiku poem... If, if you're a kid, you've probably gone, uh, gone in school and someone said a haiku poem is five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. What I want you to think about is a haiku poem being three short lines or almost three breaths long. And you want it to really show a picture um, of what you're doing. So we're going to do like a few like... Um, a few sentences about what a truck does. So a truck drives, or a truck moves. Let's imagine that it's a trash truck. So trash truck picks up trash, and then you could have the sound it makes, you know, thunk. Or trash truck backs up and then you could make beep 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 so or you could ask the trash truck a question trash truck trash truck what are you doing and the truck could answer something you know it could answer like I'm um, um, it could answer room um, so these are just examples um, you could also say trash truck and you could make a sound of what it sounds like room and then trash truck stops, eek, and then backs up, beep, beep, and then trash. And you could have any, you know, thunk, um, 
bump any word you want. So these are all, so you see, you just kind of play with things until you find something you like. We're gonna come back to this piece because I wanna try it with a different, um, a different kind of thing. So this time, and you see, this is why it's hard to use your fancy marker um, unless you have something under it because of um, it bleeds through. So this is a basketball. Um, basketballs are really fun to write about. Um, and so I, I have a few basketball poems that I've written before. Um, this one's by Jay Kwan. Orange ball bounces, take over the hoop, swoosh and score. Basketball bouncing, butterflies erupt to sky, swish. That's by Todd. And tack, attack, attack, Ashley Kristen, Cambry Shack. Tack, attack, attack. So let's take a look at our basketball. And we're just going to start making sounds that the basketball makes. So we've already got some, you know, it bounce, swoosh, uh, score is something you say, um, swish. Um, what does the sound of the basketball make when you are, you know, dribbling it? Um, bump. Um, tick, tack. I'm looking at my sheet again because this is where it gets really, really hard is when you start thinking about, you know, how are you going to make it sound? Um, so maybe there's a knock. Maybe there's a shuffle. It's the sound that your feet make um, when you're doing it. Then you have the crowd. So there might be a gasp or a roar, um, a rumble, things that you might hear is a slam. When people dunk, you don't really hear a dunk, but you might wanna use that word to kind of describe what they're doing. We've already got, oh, we've got swish, swish, slosh is good. Um, uh, let's see, um, and I'm sure you're thinking of things there, so you're probably shouting at the camera, hey, Rochelle, why aren't you using the word, oh, plunk. Plunk, that's a good word. Um, I'm trying to think of like, oh, flip, flop might be something it sounds like on the ground. Kapow, that's usually a word that you see in cartoons. Um, pop, pow. Okay, so let's start playing with these and, and think about what we could do for a basketball um, thing. So usually um, you may be talking to a basketball player that you like. Um, so basketball hero, um, shuffle, shuffle, toss, swish okay so you see how easy it is just to kind of take a few words and put it together into a uh, into a poem so basketball bounce toss land swoosh you see how nice that is so now I want to um, kind of think about, let's transition into what this would look like when it's pretty. Um, so let's, let's take one more look at the final product before we go back to, um, to, go back to the sheet. So if you want to take a look at, at my pictures again. So this is what we're looking for. So this is a poem by Basho, Old Pond, Frog Leaping, Splash, and I don't know if you can tell, um, I made a little pond underneath the pond. Um, when we did the leaping, I made the letters leap a little bit. And then under splash, um, I made some water and some splashing. And then I want you to see that with this, I started and then after I started, I was like, oh no, I could do something better with pond than just writing it. So all I did was turn over my paper. And so if you get stuck like that, that's a really good thing to do. Um, and then here's another thing. 
um, sleepy bumblebees buzzing um, about blossoms in the setting sun. So all I did was take my buzzing and make it big. So I wanna show you a little bit about bubble letters. So we're gonna go look back at my, at my page again. Um, bubble letters are not very hard. Usually you see them in, um, in cartoons or graphic novels. So with the word look, I just added a smiley face because I think the O's look like eyes. Um, with crash, I just added a few um, triangles to help it look more like a crash. And then I made some of my words, letters, like the A, a little bit diag diagonal so that you could, you could feel more of the crash. And then I surrounded it with some sharp circle um, and then I colored it in yellow. I usually like to color with crayons when I'm filling in something this big because the markers you know, run out of juice. Um, and then for zoom, I just made it long instead of making it like shorter. See how, how the look is really short. The zoom, I wanted to give a sense of motion, so I made it long. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our poems. Um, so we've written a couple of poems, um, and then we're going to kind of decide how we're going to use them. Now you see, my marker left all sorts of blood behind. Um, so I'm gonna take a sheet of paper underneath. So if you're gonna use your Sharpie for this, you're gonna wanna use a, a piece of paper underneath. I always like to start with a pencil because with a pencil, you can kind of um, block out what you're going to do. Um, so let's go back to our, our poems. Um, I think I'm so conflicted because I think we did a great job with both of our poems, but let's play a little bit more with the trash truck. Um, so we've got our noises. Um, let's read through what we came up with. Truck drives, truck moves, trash truck picks up trash thunk, trash truck backs up beep, beep, beep. I like that one. Trash truck, trash truck, what are you doing, vroom. Trash truck vroom, trash truck stops, eek, backs up, beep, beep, trash, thunk, bump. So my favorite here is trash truck backs up, beep, beep, beep. And the reason I like that is because um, it's got rhyme inside it. So you've got truck and backs up, and it's got beep, beep, beep. So it's pretty easy. Um, you could even make your truck and put it on the back of a truck. I'm just going to draw mine out. Um, I really like that one. Um, so let's start with that one. And so this would be a time when you get out. You know, you could practice on your plain piece of paper um, first um, before you put it on your fancy paper. Or you could just, you know, be brave and do it on your fancy paper. Um, why don't I get out my fancy paper? And then you, you want to start by blocking it out. So you want to start by kind of thinking about how am I going to do this? And you have a picture of a truck here. This is a cement truck. Um, so we did a trash truck, so you could always write another poem about the cement truck. And we might try that later if we have time. Um, so you might want to decide um, to draw a little picture of your truck at the top. Since we don't have a truck, I am just going to try What's nice about trucks is they're easy. And I have to tell you, I don't really draw. I write books. So a, a truck is basically a square. And then the cab is another square. And then there is a wheel here. And there's a wheel here. And then there's a wheel in the front. And it would not be even unless it had a wheel on the other side. So you can put that right behind it like that. Um, and then there's usually a window here. Um, there is usually in a truck like a front part, which I didn't dry, draw. So if there's a front part sticking out like th that, then they get, they get more wheels, I think, unless the wheel just goes here. Boy, that's a lot of wheels. I don't know. That's weird. So I'm just going to stick with my, my frontless <laughs> truck. So there's my truck. And we're going to write trash on the front with just kind of little bubble letters. 
And you see why it's nice to write with pencil first, because then if you make a mistake, see, look at that, I made a little mistake, you can just fix it up. Um, and bubble letters are just like the letters you make with a little extra. So S's are really hard, I think. You have to leave a little room. Look, see how I did that? It's kind of a little messy. It's okay. Um, so we, there we've got trash. And remember, our poem is really easy. It's trash truck, trash truck, backs up, beep, beep, beep. And so the question is, you know, do you want to have um, everything to be bubble letters or just, um, just um, beep, beep, beep? I kind of like just beep, beep, beep being bubble letters. So I'm going to do those first. Um, and so I am going to make big bubble letters down here in pencil so that I have, you know, a sense. Because beep, 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 that's hard. You don't know this. I know I won't be able to fit three this size here, so it might have to be that it's three different sizes of beeps. Um, which is great because sometimes when a truck beeps up, you hear backs up, you hear the loud beep first, and then you hear a couple of smaller beeps. Okay, here we go. Um, and you are welcome just to copy my poem. If you don't like your poem, you can write the same poem as I'm doing, and then you can save your other sheet of paper for another poem later. So now I've got a big beep, which means I've got to fit trash truck backs up beep now we've got to figure out are we going to do i think i want to do a crooked beep because i think that's kind of funny to have the letters crooked i love this beep okay the nice thing about doing beep 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 is you've got three words the same so it gives you a chance to practice so then we're going to have room for you could do like a little beep here but I think I want to do a big because we've got all this room here and so I can do a bigger beep and so this is how we do it so now here's our E And sometimes what I do at home is I just, that's why I have a big notebook like this. I just work on my bubble letters because you see some of them are big, some of them are little. I probably need to practice a lot more. And now I'm gonna run into a little problem here. Look, I'm gonna run into that B, but that's okay because I'm just gonna go behind it and pretend that this letter goes behind it like that. That's kind of cool. And now what would be really fun is if we could put some something around this that made it sound like beep look like beeping but let's get our first words in first so we're going to do trash truck and I'm just going to do big block letters look how nice that looks trash truck backs up And then we have beep, beep, beep. Now, what I like to do with this, so what I like to do with this is I like to outline my beeps. Um, and you can do it with your um, Sharpie or your big black marker, or you can do it with something else. And then you can have time to color it in. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and outline this first one with the black. Um, and then sometimes what you can do to make it even more fun is you can do a little um, zen tangle inside so that it's not, just not beep, beep, beep um, with just the colors. So there we've got beep. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and outline all of them. But if you are like, oh, I don't think I wanna color in all of this. Um, and let me tell you, I think it's easier with color crayon than markers, but it's fun to play with markers. So you could have outlined one of these um, in one of your Crayola markers, um, or you could have um, outlined it in crayon. 
So you have to be careful when you get these little ones. You just use the very tip. And the nice thing about outlining is if you make a mistake, you just go ahead and erase the pencil afterwards. So it doesn't really matter. You won't see it. Um, and this way you can fix any of your mistakes. So you've got beep, 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 and that's great. Um, one way to make it kind of fun is to start putting little circles um, or different things on the inside. So I like to put like dots. Um, almost like what a horn would look like. So I'm going to put dots on all my Bs. And you can put half dots on the side. You see how cool that is? Um, and then you can decide different things to do um, for each of these. And then once you have your dots, then you can go back in um, with your color your colored marker and color it in. Um, and you could make these all different colors. Um, you wouldn't have to stick with all purple. Um, and you could put yellow or blue or anything like that. That makes it really fun. Um, and then you could do other shapes if you wanted to. You could do, you know, things like this. Once you colored it, you could even make a little, a little face in there that was like, oh no. <laughs> Oh no, it's so loud, the beeping. So, so here you have the basics of what you're gonna do. The other thing you could do like I did on my, on my poster is make some little um, squiggles to make it sound, look like it's loud. Sometimes you'll see this on ads where the, the you know, it's almost like it's the reverberation from the noise. You see these little things. Um, and you just play with that until you get something that you like. And so this, you know, I just did kind of a little one, but this is kind of fun. Um, you have all day to play with this. You can color in your truck, you can add a road, you can add trash, and then you have a poem. Trash truck backs up, beat, beat, beat. So I wanna work on another one with you just because I think it's fun um, to play with. So let's take out your picture. Um, I think we should do the bear. I don't know, maybe we should do the, I think this is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And I don't know about you, but I have never seen or talked to or run from a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but they're kind of fun to think about. So you wanna think about, I'm just gonna write T-Rex because it's easy. I'm not sure I could spell Tyrannosaurus. Um, and so let's think about sound. Um, let's think about, I don't think you can see this very well if it's on my purple marker. So, sounds, but what a T-Rex. I think it was probably growl, roar. Um, I think it would gnash its teeth. I'm going to write gnash uh, because that's a great word just as it is. Um, um, it probably clicks its teeth. It probably makes... Um, like when it runs, it probably makes a thump. Um, look at how big its feet are compared to its arms. Um, and look at this poor little guy running away. I don't think it's the baby um, because of the way it's built. I think it's just a little guy who's like, don't eat me. So growl, roar, gnash. And so this is whenever I get stuck, like what word am I gonna use? I pull out my word, my list of sound words which is right here, <laughs> way at the bottom, um, because some, that will help you um, to give you an idea because you might be going, wow, I don't know. So I think it probably roars. I've got roar. Um, it doesn't slither or slosh. I bet it, um, so when it eats, there's probably a snap. That's gross. Crunch. Ooh, maybe it says yum. I don't know. Do you think ty the T-Rex talks? Um, let's see, kapow, probably not. Meow, moan, maybe when it's sleeping, moan, grumble. Ooh, I bet it says, I bet it rumbles when it runs, or maybe the earth rumbles when it runs. So you gotta think about what it sounds like when it goes. Um, clank, clap, um, Boy, hum, howl, hiss. 
funk, grumble, grunt, flip, pluck, plunk. Plunk might be the sound it makes when it when it drops one of its um, thud. Thud might be the sound it makes when it's running towards you. So that might be like a way to think about. So usually what I do when I'm writing a poem like this is I write down a bunch of words that I think about and then you start thinking about a scene. Um, and so with the T-Rex, you might think about running away. So imagine if you were in a, in a place where there was a T-Rex and you heard it, you would probably hear thump, thump, and then maybe what would go next? Or maybe it would be rumble, thump, rumble, thump. And then like, I'm thinking of something that would be like plunk, 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 um, roar, plunk, 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 and then eek. So you wouldn't even have to mention the T-Rex you might want to just call it T-Rex Nightmare. So this might be something that you dreamed about and it's really running away. Thump, thump, rumble, thump, rumble, thump, roar, plunk, 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 eek. So this is not bad, but let's edit it a little bit so that you, so that it's a little bit shorter. So let's think about, you know, maybe the first thing you would hear is that T-Rex sticking its big head outside of the bushes. So maybe the first thing you would hear would be, so I'm gonna just move over here and start here. So we've got, so we've got our rough draft, we've got our ideas, we've got our rough draft. Now we're going to say, so oh, maybe we, the first thing you hear is rustle. And then you hear thump, thump, and then you hear rumble thump. And then as it gets closer, you hear thump, 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 and then roar. So you hear rustle, thump, thump, rumble, thump, 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 roar. And then you have your response, which is eek. So that is a little longer than a haiku. And that's why we're calling these short poems. So a haiku, you would maybe limit yourself to three lines, but you don't have to. I think it's fun to have it a little bit longer. And now you have a little bit more to play with. And so here you could, you know, save room for your Tyrannosaurus. So I would maybe mark here. Okay, my Tyrannosaurus is gonna take up that much room at the very top of the page and I'm gonna work on the lettering. And so with this, I'm gonna say, you know, one of the thing that's, that's fun with lettering something like this is that you can decide which is going to um, be emphasized. And we definitely want eek to be emphasized, um, but you might, you know, go th rustle, thump, thump, rumble, thump, 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 thump. Each of these could get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then the roar could be really big, and then the eat could be kind of big in its own way. Um, so that could be fun. So I'm just gonna play with this. Um, I'm not gonna draw it out because we're running short of time, um, but we're gonna just play with what this might look like. So wrestle. So if I wanna make that look like it's actually wrestling, I could do some wiggles along the words. And if you don't like this, then of course remember, all you have to do is turn it over. Um, and mine even showed through and everything and it, it doesn't really matter. So then you have thump, thump, rumble, thump. And I'm just gonna go right down like this. Thump, thump. Rumble thump. And now we have, remember, we have our thump, 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 and we want to see which is, 
So maybe we'll do the first one is big, but not, not bubble letters. And then we go to bubble letters. And we're gonna keep these really square. And I ran out of room there, but that's okay. And that we want our last one to be big. So maybe I might even do a whole thing down here. So I want you to see that mine is not perfect and that's okay. And sometimes you do it. That's why sometimes it's fun to practice on the practice sheet. Oh, I've almost run out of room for my P, but I'm okay. There we go. So you see how it's going thump, thump, thump. Now we wanna make a big roar. So you might, you might make the big roar here. I'm gonna put mine there. I'm gonna kind of put my letters together. Huh. So you see we're running out of room, but that's okay. There we go, so there's roar. And I think what I would do with Roar is make it like this, and I would probably do it like I did with my other thing. I would color this background yellow and probably the words red, um, and then I'd make some of these um, triangles to make it seem to look a little scarier. Um, and then you want your eek, and I think I'll make mine skinny partly because I don't have a lot of room, but partly because I think skinny E's make it sound like, like you're saying eek. Um, so there's just my outline and I wanna put an exclamation point. I don't think you need a lot of exclamation points when you're doing something like this um, because your, your words are your exclamation points. But with a, something like this, eek is kind of cool. And then you can do things like this to make things stand out. Now, of course, now you have your color crayons, you have your markers, you can do lots of things. Um, so this has been really fun. Um, I wanna thank you all for coming and joining me with our noisy poetry. Uh, and one of the things you can do in the next week as you're walking around outside or you're in your house is listen for noisy words and then write them down on your scratch paper. And then you'll have a whole dictionary of additional noisy words that you can use. And you can write poems about anything that's going on in your house. So if when someone's making dinner, it's really noisy, you know, or they're making popcorn and you hear the pop, 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 or even you put my popcorn in the microwave and you hear the pop, 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 pop that's the source of a poem. Or you can listen to um, your dog snore um, or have a dream and you can write down the noises that your dog makes or your cat or a parent or a sibling. Um, this morning my son screamed. Um, I think he was still asleep. And I thought, oh, that would make a great noisy poem. So go forth and write your poetry. It was great to be with you. Again, my name is Rochelle. Thanks. And have